Hello, folks. I'm uh, sitting here in my hotel room in the beautiful city of Miami at the Fountain Blue Hotel, where I attended for the past couple of days a, a great summit here with the Aspen Dental, where they had, uh, you know, they have a thousand dental offices here in the U.S. and they had uh, thousands of dentists here present, and uh, I gave a talk to their 65 and honest uh, core uh, group. Um, they had a number of them here uh, present, and so we had a wonderful day. And I figured what I'm going to do with you here today, this morning, as I wake up right uh, from hotel rooms, to share with you a quick little excerpt from one of the areas they discuss that might be of some interest to you. In situations in which you have this type of a galaxy-like uh, configuration where you have a, a center that's uh, large but then you do have these fins in there these fins are not the diameter of your uh, 3d files and therefore they can't get to it so how do we clean these spaces and we have found that traditionally we used to use an activation or agitation of this uh, spaces using the piezoelectric ultrasonics uh, or some type of a sonic motion. But recently we've been facing some new technology and while this technology is, is, is great and uh, it, it needs to be kind of yet proven adequately in my opinion, it's very costly and it's out of reach for the average clinician. For example, the General Wave being about, you know, a $70,000 to $80,000 per the machine and then about seventy-five dollars to $100 per application. It adds up very quickly uh, for your uh, procedural processes and it does take a little bit add some time to your uh, to your uh, workflow as well and it's also just a kind of a single trick pony where it only does that other laser options including your water lace and your uh, light walker you know peeps and sweeps and then now the edge pro are an application of laser light to generate that same kind of a uh, ultrasonic effect of cavitation, agitation, acoustic streaming to move the irrigants and energize the irrigant. And they're nice and they have sometimes a little bit of additional applications, especially some of the larger laser units that have multiple applications. And those, if you do use lasers in your office, then why not? You already have them for those other uses and you can apply it for this use to achieve a little bit greater cleaning. But the use of laser alone for creating this effect may not necessarily be the best option just for the expense uh, perspective. I like this quote by uh, our uh, founder, Dr. Ann Koch, she says, don't worship at the altar of technology. And I agree 100% because it seems to me that oftentimes we think that the solution to every problem is spending a little more money, buying something more expensive, and that'll solve the problem. As you know, this is a slide I always show in my presentations, and that's by Albert Einstein, that everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler, and that's really the motto at Real World Endo, where we try to uh, bring things down to their simplest common denominator to achieve successful results. And to that extent, I think the generation of that, uh, that cavitation, agitation, acoustic streaming can be done least expensively with the use of ultrasonics. That's essentially what ultrasonics do. Instead of using the laser light or the crushing of solutions against the barrier that creates uh, ultrasound, what we're doing is we're using a crystal inside a piezoelectric handpiece to create that piezoelectric effect motion that then uh, transfers all of that through the liquid medium. And in all of these, the most common denominator is the liquid, the solution that is used to generate or rather to carry the, uh, the, uh, the energy that is being activated. Ultrasonics is already something that we have that we use for troughing of dentin, access preparation, cleaning inside the chamber, removing pulp stones uh, for retreatments, removing posts and uh, objects that are in there irrigation and, and, and kind of agitation, and obviously surgical application of ultrasonics. So we have so many applications for this simple, about a thousand dollar device, and uh, I don't see really the benefit we get by spending so much more and adding to the cost of care to achieve the same effect, but with a fancier thing such as a laser. Now, you may say to me that, well, look, the ultrasonic situation is a problem because the tip can't get around the curves because the tip has to be um, kind of rigid in order to produce the ultrasonics. And I would agree that that's true, although if you look at a higher magnification, you will see that there is still churning of the solutions at the apical area, even though you may be using the ultrasonic at the mid-root level. 
because there's flushing going on and the acoustic streaming will actually project the energy through that. I will probably make a video to showcase that because a lot of people don't realize that it does happen. Plus, if you use a more flexible laser that is generating the ultrasonic, the ultrasound, if you will, or rather the cavitation and agitation, but is flexible and can get around the curves, you know that if you, add, you actually activate that, you can, if you're not careful, get a ledge right around the curve, and then that is itself a massive problem. So these are challenges you're gonna have to deal with with all of these various solutions that you need to be kind of uh, cognizant of. I think piezoelectric ultrasonics is the least expensive, kind of a real world answer to trying to remove this debris, except that you have to always use the ultrasonic with water. It has to be, uh, you have to have self-contained water that is obviously treating your lines and that's running through the ultrasonic the whole time. It's acting as the flushing effect that you get from it. And the tips that I use, as you know, are my, these are the favorite tips that I use on every single one of my cases, that's the E15D, E14D, and the E12. Sometimes I may not use the E12, it's a very curvy route that I don't want it to go all the way down. Um, but the E15D and E14D I use on every single case. So that's the key thing, and I just wanted to also show you the way this is used with the E15D. Uh, I may have shared this uh, video before, I don't know to be honest now, over 500 some videos, I don't know what I've shared or what I haven't, but here it is, and it shows that this uh, tip, uh, E12 tip water that comes from your ultrasonic runs through the side of this uh, file tip and you can see in a time lapse here in about 30 seconds or actually about a minute of application in this uh, true tooth clear true tooth it does very nicely clean out the debris that's inside the canal this uh, uh, tenacious gel and it shows therefore that this flushing is happening now again uh, this is a straight fairly straight route so therefore we're able to achieve length but when you have a curve you will still be able to um, get some uh, motion of the irrigant beyond the tip as you will see and the same thing is true with your um, passive ultrasonic irrigation using sodium hop chloride. Anyway, I just wanted to share this here with you from my hotel room and I will uh, obviously maybe show that issue that I said about the, uh, the passive ultrasonic irrigation beyond the curve using an ultrasonic so you can be assured that you, know, you don't need to spend so much more money to buy something so much more expensive just because of the kind of the marketing and the labeling that you hear and that your multitasking good old ultrasonic is adequate for the most part and actually that's been shown by Dr. Bastrani's research as well that uh, it is adequate. Alrighty guys we'll cut it short here have a great one let's save some teeth and I'll see you in the next video.